my name is Len Small, and I'm the art director of Nautilus. Uh, we're a new science magazine here in New York. I'm going to use this. Or not. Okay. Let's see if this will work. No, oh, there we go. Uh, science is colored by story. Um, the filter that we use reveals the mood, the light, the temperature of how we see things. The artwork that I work to create for Nautilus is dipped in questions, the complexities, and the exploration of science and writing. It's science mirrored in the visual narrative. Nautilus has a small creative team that works with writers and editors and of course all the illustrators and fabulous creators to imagine the visual parallels in math, physics, biology, philosophy. Our goal is to break away from the image of science with beakers and lab coats uh, because that's not the true experience. We try to consider how the past, present, and future work together or repeat themselves. We want to think about the statistical challenges of reproduction <laughs> or revisit the big figures of science and realizing how gonzo they truly were. A Nautilus was started four years ago. Um, we were uh, we were a nonprofit magazine, and uh, our goal was to really connect science to big questions. And uh, the idea was to take themes and use those themes as a way of connecting the different fields, and also connecting to readers. Uh, each month on the magazine uh, online, we publish under a different theme. Is this for currents? And our approach um, as a magazine is to be accessible, but we don't want to be soft with our science either. Uh, we don't we don't try to uh, uh, we we try to entice the curious reader, but we're um, we're also going to challenge them. Uh, we want to give them a portal uh, to understand what's happening, even if they don't get the equations on the first read or the next read, as I often don't. <laughs> Uh, we also publish in print, and uh, what's interesting we've discovered is that um, readers really enjoy this experience. And contrary to a lot of you know what you hear about media moving to digital, um, our print circulation continues to grow, uh, and people are really excited to have an object in their hands. So what we try to make them is something that's worth keeping. Uh, you know, writing about science takes months and years, and, uh, but once it gets to us, we have to figure out how to give it a more uh, immediate companion with our art and illustration. This was a, uh, for a cover story about uh, Fotini Marcopoulou, who was a, uh, a physicist studying quantum gravity, and she moved from that to, um, to working in uh, a more kind of uh, she, le she left the, the theoretical to work in a more practical science, and we wanted to be able to share her experience and her, a her abstract quest. Uh, this is a little preview for our upcoming issue. Um, it's, uh, we wanted to tell the story of Katherine Johnson, who is actually, now they're also making a movie about, which is she was a brilliant mathematician who was hired by NASA um, during a time of racial segregation in the South. And it's a, it's a pretty fantastic story, and we were trying to think, how do we portray her? Um, and we wanted to be true to her experience. Uh, you know, she was a big dreamer and a gifted thinker, and really surround her in her environs. We, we do a lot of stories about exploring the interior world. Um, this is a story about silent discos, which are, if anyone knows what they are, it's uh, like 
parties where everyone wears headphones and listens to their own music. So when you go into the room, it's completely silent, but everybody's kind of bopping on their own tune. But it's, it's the notion of what is being part of the group. And again, it goes back to asking questions of our uh, readers. Uh, this was a piece for the, about the story of Walter Pitts, who um, was uh, you know, a pioneer neuroscientist, but also really suffered from a lot of uh, mental illness, and um, and that is an important complexity. You know, it's it's when when science touches real life, and and how do those things um, intersect? For a cover story on uh, Buckminster Fuller and his uh, work with war games, he was trying to figure out how to um, uh, actually try to to beat the idea of war, um, and. You know, we, we worked on this cover for a long time, and the artist, Brian Stouffer, came up with this brilliant solution. Um, you know, what are, what are we trying to do with our bombs? <laughs> um, uh, a recent story about, you know, we also tried to be accessible. Uh, this was a story actually by Aziz Ansari, the comedian, um, about understanding the psychological profile of online dating and how. Um, you know what what happens with uh, communication and relationships when when the rules change. We spend a lot of time thinking about these themes that we're going to work with every month. Um, the structure of our magazine really comes from those themes, and uh, we try to make these concepts into surprising stories in themselves, these, these images that become the cover of every issue. Um, this was uh, a piece that was created for the cover of the scale issue. This is space. I love the intersection here. This was a cover for a theme that we called 2050. It was about the near future. Um, and one of the challenges I gave the artist was not to give us any spaceships, any rockets, any electronics. How can you um, convey the idea of the future without those kind of tropes that we normally expect? And, and I love this transition that he came up with. This is about selection. This was the cover for the issue called Slow. Creativity. Uh, we also like to work with narrative artists like Lauren Weinstein. Um, this was uh, just a, a part of an autobiographical series she did based on her um, learning during her pregnancy that she was a carrier for cystic fibrosis. And so it, it was a perfect story to, ex to have um, her kind of explore and, and really it turned a lot of heads. Uh, we, we do like to have our artists kind of explore um, the information and, and uh, not necessarily have a, always a clear narrative path. This is actually Amanda, who's going to be presenting earlier <laughs> later today. She did a great piece on what the color red means in our, in our brain. Uh, and ultimately, we just want to keep it to simple questions. Uh, this is a piece about uh, Ken Dolphin's talk. Is there really water in space? Are we going to eventually lose writing? Does sex make us better partners in life? When we try to revisit the rules of physics, realizing the deeper you get, the less likely everything is supposed to work. The improbability of gravity, or what if it stopped working? Is it possible to freeze the heart? Librarians are the original search engines. Our goal is to take an intimate picture of the world and refract it. We continue to give our reader a new twist in stories and the struggles of science. Thank you. <laughs>